Okay, so when you're getting ready to attach your two pieces of wax, um, it's really good to make sure that things aren't going to move. So what I've done is I've just taken a heavy object, and this could be like a butter knife or a file or any heavy thing you have that fits inside the ring, just to pin it in place so that if I move it, it's still going to wiggle back to where it needs to be. And then we have the piece that we're going to attach. And we've got that lined up. And you can block that down, but you'll find that that may limit you getting in there to melt hot material. So the hard part is now, what we want to do is we're going to take our lighter and our pokey tool. And we're going to heat it up so that we can get it hot enough for fusion. And it's very tiny, so it heats up fairly quick. And then we're just going to go in and just gently melt our wax together. And this is just enough to get it to fuse so that we can check and make sure it's exactly where we want it to be. Now, I know you want to look immediately, but you've got to take the time and let the wax cool. If you rush through it, it tends to break, and then you're doing it all over again. So just gently remove your piece and then make sure it's attached. And it's going to be very delicately attached. So what you need to know at this point is you can still ruin your wax bond. Okay, I'll bring this up to the camera to show it. You can ruin your wax bond. But that will be enough to hold it temporarily. So what I'm going to do now is just come back with the hot tool again and add more melted wax, right? More fusing in this region. And so the residual heat of my pokey tool is more than enough to melt this wax together to get a good bond. But what I don't want to do is get it so hot that it melts completely through the wax um, and create a hole where the wax won't fill. So at this point, we can turn our material over. There's a slight air gap, but that's okay. And then you can look, and I'm slightly off of where my top is supposed to be. So I can break it off. And that's something that we can redress later. And then we can slide our material back. Make sure our top is straight down this time, dropping our heavy object in to hold it in that position. Slide our material back together. And then do it all again. But the trick here is to make sure your setup is exactly the way you want it, so that when you go to do your melting step, it saves you a ton of carving from one giant piece of ring stock or one giant purple slab. But the trick is learning to take the time to make sure everything's lined up and that your weld is good enough to hold together. And then what we want to do is say, okay, is that lined up with the top the way we want? That looks like a yes. And then check, is this the angle that we want to attach our wax or does it need to be steeper? And in my case, I think I'd like it a little steeper. So what we're going to do, we're going to heat up our tool again and then just apply a little pressure to the wax so that when we fuse it on there, it stays at the angle we want. Okay. And then now we have something that's a little higher than our plane. And we should be able to just test fit it and make sure that it still lays on our hand the way we want. And uh, you're being very delicate. This is wax, right? This isn't metal. But now we know we can build up all this material here. Sorry, this material here to get the fusion that we're looking for. So at that point, it's just more heating our tool. And then just gently running our hot tool along that lip to get fusion between the two pieces of wax. So that's it. Doesn't have to be pretty yet, but when we're done, it's gonna have to be very pretty. Okay. So do that one more time. And 
and at this point now you can fold your wax so you can see what you're doing, um, which makes the assembly a lot faster. Okay, so I'll continue to build this up, but I think this is an effective um, demonstration of how to add one slab to the next, and we'll get through um, building up processes in a minute. Okay, so we're getting ready to attach the other slab to our ring wax, and this is a slightly smaller spoony tool that I have. Um, depends on the size of tool you need. If you only have one, um, you learn which edges do what you need to do. But uh, it holds a lot of thermal mass. And I'm just using the tip, right? So you can do this, the same thing with the pokey tool, right? Make sure it blows out the fire. You just get a little less working time. One thing you want to be aware of is you're playing with fire, so don't catch your hair on fire. But remember, if you're using the pokey tool and the spoony tool for heating, they're both hot. They're also both in your hand. So I'm going to say this, and I know it's going to happen anyway, but try your best not to burn yourself with the hot metal tool that you're heating. Okay. There we go. I've got to set that down. So then we've got our initial wax fusion here. And um, when you're using the Bic lighter, it's burning, you know, a fuel. So carbon's in there, and that's why uh, the wax is turning black. If you've got an alcohol lamp at home, that's going to give you a little cleaner um, burn. And so you won't get that set forming. But for all intents and purposes, this is going to show us everything we need for what we're trying to accomplish in, in the current setup. So now what I can do is I can come back and I'm just going to take my big fat file and just lay that inside my ring so it's steady and I can start building up the residual material. And that's when these little fluffies come in handy. So all these shavings from previous work um, you can use to build up parts of your wax that uh, you maybe <laughs> are missing. So I'm going to heat up my tool nice and hot, and then I'm going to use it to actually pick up all the fluffies. And you'll see that it starts to create a very thick glob of wax, and that can be deposited we're building up. Okay. And so I'm going to get a nice clean fusion line here by just drawing my hot tool right along the seam of the two parts. Okay. So now we know that that's a strong bond. We're going to do the same thing on the back side. is. So, pretty simple. And we've added a lot to our ring that we can carve. And is the line that we carved with the file perfectly lined up? No. Does that matter? Maybe. It really depends on what your design is. Since I'm adding this just to goof off, I know that I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of hot tool work to bridge this gap and this gap. And I'll be throwing in little slabs. And so I'm not particularly hung up on that. I just want to get most of the material out, so when I come back with my my spoony tool, I can just come in and shave that down at my leisure, and know that it's generally a radius. Right? It's not it doesn't have to be exact, but it's already kind of cut. I'm not going against the grain and taking a full flat slab and trying to shave it down to something that matches my interior radius. So it's it's just a preemptive mechanism to make your life easier because then you're not trying to figure out how to fit this large file all the way through the wax, right? Because once you hit your ring, uh, it tends to limit it. So you can dive into the ring a little bit if it's tapered enough, and you can come around from the other side and do the same thing. But anytime you're having trouble, you can always resort to coming back to your scrapey spoony tool. 
very easy way to start building bigger things for more elaborate jewelry.